Hello there, why don't you take a seat and tell me what appears to be the problem. But before we do that, remember that in the past videos, the consult the doctors and the stoicism videos, my volume was very low. I checked everything. I checked every setting in my video editing software. I hadn't changed anything, but I checked it all. I maxed it all out. It made no difference. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I checked my device. I checked the, because I'm, I'm not recording this with a camera, but on my device. I checked all the settings of the device. I couldn't figure it out. I simply had no idea what was going on. Then I picked up my microphone and I noticed that this slider was halfway down. And when I do that while I am talking, you will notice that the volume gets lower and lower and lower. Now it's all the way back up. I have a PhD. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I do apologize. I hope this fixes it. Please let me know what the audio, sorry, what the volume level is now. Is this okay? I'm also trying to speak up a little bit because at some point I was shouting. Turns out you can shout a lot into a microphone, but if it is almost dead as to the volume it's accepting, it do not matter much. Bloody hell. Anyway, uh, I'm going to start in the questions now. Someone, uh, we had this discussion at some point of what, what constitutes a piston filler and what's a captive converter, what that stuff. And this person commented, basically, if the turning knob, knob, sorry, comes away from the body, is it then a true piston filler? So when you unscrew it, that knob kind of moves away from the body. Is it then a true piston filler? Why not? I think that's a definition that we can use for sure. Next question. Has anyone found a fountain pen that can be used on a plane? Um, no, this is a pencil. It can be used on a plane and there shall be no leakage whatsoever. Ballpoint, probably fine. I don't see why not. Rollerball, fine. Fountain pens just have an issue. Now, I'm going to speculate here. Pressure differences in the cabin, we have talked about all that in another video. Uh, yes sometimes fountain pens can leak. I simply think that this may be a matter of, this is a compromise we have to make. Maybe it's simply the matter that you cannot use fountain pens on planes and some people seem to do it without issue. I think the, the thing to remember is, it's on ascending and descending that you get those pressure differences in the cabin Beyond that, you're probably okay, but of course it's possible at that point you already have some ink in the cap because you ascended and there was some leakage. Yeah, I'm, I'm paranoid now. I'm just adjusting the microphone again. Uh, <clears throat> maybe that's just the way it is. And maybe you need to ask for another napkin, wipe your pen clean and, and keep writing. Someone should do the test. If someone wants to do an intercontinental flight and do, say, eight or ten hours of continuous writing, uh, then I'm definitely listening. Uh, but I I don't know if it's possible to have a fountain pen that doesn't leak at all. Also, why is this hood so odd? SBRE Brown swag. Link below. Um, moving on to an interesting question. <clears throat> These were two questions uh, from the same person. Is there a pen that you sold but that you regret selling and that you ended up adding back. Yeah, there was one, and I forgot to take it out, but you can you can find the review of it online, as well as the re-review. I have sold a lot of pens. In fact, I would say I've, I've I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that I've, I've sold a, a few hundred pens over the years. And there was one that I missed, and that was, I'm just adjusting the mic a little bit, the position, sorry. There was one, and that was the Omas 360 Magnum. That was a pen that I really enjoyed using. The only problem with it is, is that it's very big, and it doesn't necessarily fit in every pen case that you can use, <clears throat> or that you can own. And I ended up selling that, and that one I regretted selling. Now, the good news is that pen went to a very nice person. Uh, so then that lessens the pain when you know that it went to someone, and I think at that point it was one of his grail pens. 
So I know that, <coughs> apologies, <coughs> I know that he was very happy uh, with that. And that's great. I did end up getting another Omas 360 Magnum. Yeah. It's just a very comfortable pen, the way it's made. It's very comfortable. I find that triangular profile makes it very pleasant to use. And that's, that's why I missed it. Yeah. Now, the final question is related to this. And I thought this one was very interesting. And I wanted to save this one for last. Because I try to do the more philosophical questions where I uh, orate for a while. Uh, I, I try to save those for last. When do you know it's time to sell a pen from your collection? Well, clearly, this is the type of question. There's no objective answer to this. I, I, you can't say, well, if X, Y, and Z happen, then that pen should go. But as I said, I have sold a lot of pens, and I can try to reason through the process in hopes that that might be helpful. And this is a process that I feel very strongly about. I think it is very important to cull collections. Now, if you have a collection, and I typically get in trouble when I make the distinction between an accumulation and a collection. I have a video on that. For now, I'll just say, if you have a collection, something with a focus, something like every Parker 51 ever made, and every finish, etc., you don't want to cull that because that is a collection. But if you have pens that you use, I'm assuming they're pens that you use, then you may want to cull that collection. You may want to take out what you no longer use. If you collect pens and you don't use them, you just put them on a shelf or on a dis in a display case or something like that, well, then it's very clear when you should get rid of it when the value has increased, why right? And some people do this with Mont Blanc writer's editions or that kind of stuff. But that's not what I'm talking about. That's not how I use fountain pen, so I won't get into that. How do I know when it's time to sell a pen? Well, it starts with me not using it. If I own a pen that has been in a case for three months, four months, five months, then I start to think about, is this something that I really want to keep? Because if I'm not using it, then why do I have it? Again, there was a time I had over 300 pens. And now, I think I can genuinely say I don't even own 10% of that. That's still a lot of pens, but it's not as many as I used to have. If I have something and I don't use it, then clearly I don't need it. Because if I needed it, I would be using it. That's my viewpoint on that anyway. So that's where it starts. Now what typically happens for me is that I come in, I come across that pen and I think, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, and then I ink it up again and I see how it handles. Do I still like it? Sometimes the answer is yeah. I haven't used this in a while, I kind of forgot about this one, but actually it's a very nice pen and I'll keep it. Sometimes it's also a matter of, it's still nice, but I just don't need it. Recently I sold an Omas uh, Paragon Grand in uh, Arco Celluloid, very desirable celluloid, beautiful pen, and I loved it, uh, superb fine nib. but. I just wasn't using it because I also have an Old Wind Classic and I also have an Armando Simoni Club Bologna Extra, both in Arco. I know Arco is very desirable, but I'm not a dragon. Dragons hoard. I don't hoard, I use. And if I have three pens that are indeed all made of a very desirable celluloid that everybody wants to have, that's great. But I need two. At some point, that's going to go down to one. Guaranteed, but I haven't yet figured out which of the two others I want to keep. But the Paragon of these three I used the least often. And so it went. By the way, also to an incredibly nice person. So, 
once again very happy that that has gone to another owner who really loves that pen. I know because I have checked in about three times now how the pen is still doing. But that's not to say I miss it because I haven't missed it for a second. It was a nice pen, great nib, all that, but it wasn't used enough. And if it's not used enough, it goes. So for me, those two things are important factors. When have I last used this pen? And upon trying it out again, is this something I need? And for me, the first time I sold pens was quite difficult. And I was afraid I would regret it. And again, I've sold hundreds. I missed one. Oh, I purchased it back. Not from that person, but I purchased another one. And that's how it is. You know, it, 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 it's that simple. I like to be very pragmatic about this. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. I've sold so many pens. And what, what happens quite often now is that I feel that I like a pen. But then I also ask myself, yeah, but do I really need this pen? And then often the answer, often the answer is no. No, I don't need it. It's cute or it's fun, but I don't need it. I have what I need, what I really like using. And the rest, that goes out. So that's my process. And the final thing I will say about that is I cannot overemphasize how much it matters to me to keep the pens I have accumulated because it's not a collection in my case. There's rhyme no reason to what I have really. I want to keep that manageable because I find it overwhelming to own too many pens, to, to own too much stuff in general. Um, so give it a shot. If you are considering this, you've not sold a pen before, give it a shot. You may find it very liberating because you end up with a carefully curated set of pens that you love using because those are the ones that stay. And even those, sometimes, I've been in the position where I was absolutely certain I would never sell a certain pen until a year later or five years later and it's gone. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I don't want to keep you here longer than is absolutely necessary. I hope that was useful. Let me know what you do. How do you know when it's time to sell a pen? Have you sold pens? How was the experience? And um, that's it. I hope this was useful. I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye.